Welcome to the beautiful Andalusian city of Seville. Located in southwestern Spain, Seville is one of the most visited cities in the entire country and home to some of the most incredible architecture. Seville is where to head for exquisite food, flamenco music and dancing, and historical sites that date back to Roman times. In today's video, we're going to explore all of the best things to do in Seville. One of my absolute favorite places in all of Seville, and a place that you should not miss, is Plaza España. Built for the Ibero-American Exposition of 1929, this is still the largest plaza in all of Spain. It's a touristy spot for sure, but it is so worth taking your time to walk up to the viewpoints, look at the intricate tile work, and explore the different benches that represent each region of Spain. If you're an avid photographer, you should not miss returning to the plaza just before sunset. The colors of the buildings change completely, and there are even flamenco dancers busking around the plaza. Close to Plaza España is another plaza that's worth wandering around, Plaza de América. Here you'll find the Archaeology Museum, the Folk Art Museum, and the stunning Royal Pavilion with Mudejar architecture. Today's video is sponsored by NordVPN. I have been using Nord for over two years. As a digital nomad and an expat, having a VPN is essential. And I've tested out quite a few over the years. And so I'm really excited to share what they're doing, why I love it, and why you need it. Nord are offering a four months free if you sign up for a two year contract if you go to nordvpn.com slash eternal expat. Living abroad, traveling around the world is magical. But have you ever tried to watch your favorite show from back home or gone to a website where you need to fill something out for your taxes or something like that and you just can't get on the website? You are restricted. A VPN can help you access these websites, watch your favorite shows, Make sure you're not missing out on any important documents that need to be filed. And with NordVPN, you can access over 60 different countries. And while it's great to be able to keep up with your favorite shows, the real reason that you want to have a VPN is to protect your data, to protect yourself when you're sitting in a public cafe, at a co-working space, on an airplane or an airport or the dreaded Flix bus. And the great thing about NordVPN is that it won't slow you down. If you've used VPNs in the past and you've had to do things like I have, upload videos, download photos, any kind of heavy Wi-Fi that maybe would be slow anyway, a VPN can make it even slower, but not with NordVPN. It is one of the fastest out there and I have never even noticed a difference when I use it at a public cafe or a co-working space absolutely do not miss out on the chance to get four extra months free on a two-year plan when you sign up at nordvpn.com slash eternal expat. Now, let's get back to Sevilla. For even more incredible architecture and history, you cannot miss a trip to the Royal Alcazar. This is without a doubt one of the best things to do in Seville, and thanks to how busy it can be in the summer months, you will definitely want to make sure that you have pre-booked your tickets online in advance. Inside the palace, which is still a home to the Spanish royal family when they are visiting Seville, you'll find architecture from the Romans, the Moors, and the Spanish royal family. Be sure to grab at least one audio guide for the group if you're self-touring the palace. Alternatively, visit with a tour to really learn more about this wonderful place. Whichever option you choose, be sure to stay behind and explore the royal gardens for a little while. It's a peaceful and magical place to spend some time. Give yourself at least an hour and a half, if not two hours, to explore this entire site. As you exit the palace, you'll walk through the Patio de Banderas and back out into the main plaza of Seville. I really recommend only visiting one of these large sites per day while you're in Seville. 
It can start to merge together if you try to pack too many tourist attractions into one day, and you'll be exhausted by the end, especially if you're visiting during the warmer months. Seville is incredibly hot in late spring and throughout the entire summer. I suggest spending the rest of the day strolling through somewhere like the Triana neighborhood, where you can visit the local market, walk along the cobbled streets, look at the beautiful tiles that used to be made in this very neighborhood, and sit at an outdoor cafe to relax with some tapas. A different day should be dedicated to another of the most wonderful things to do in Seville. Visiting the cathedral and Geralda Tower, originally a mosque built by the Moors, the cathedral was converted into a Catholic church in 1248 after the conquest of Seville by Ferdinand III. It is currently the largest Gothic cathedral in the entire world and it is the third largest overall after the Vatican in Rome and St. Paul's in London. I highly recommend visiting the cathedral with a guide or at least getting yourself the audio guide, which is available with your entry ticket. There is so much to learn about this cathedral and it is so steeped in history and so full of incredible art. You don't wanna miss out on understanding what you're looking at as you explore. Be sure to start the tour of the cathedral by heading up the ramp inside the Geralda Tower. It's 104 meters, or 341 feet tall, and the views back over the city are breathtaking. Another fun Seville site not to miss is the Setas de Sevilla, or the Seville Mushrooms. Beneath this wooden structure, you'll find a nice indoor market Head down even lower and you'll be able to spot some Roman ruins. For a fee, you can wander through the ruins. For fun photos, walk up the steps to stand just beneath the setas, where there is an I Heart Sevilla sign. Finally, you can grab a ticket to go up the elevator inside to the very top to a viewing platform. The setas look great both by day and at night when they are all lit up. To get a peek inside the lives of the elite of Sevilla's past, head inside the places like Palacio de las Dueñas, or my personal favorite, Casa de Pilatos. If you have extra time on your trip, consider taking a half-day trip to the city of Italica, I will link in the description below to the tour that I used when I went, which was fantastic. Italica was founded in 206 BC, making it the first Roman settlement in present-day Spain and the first Roman city to be created outside of present-day Italy. It was also the birthplace of the famous Roman emperor Hadrian. Welcome to Italica, the first Roman settlement in all of Spain. We are in the middle of the amphitheater, which at one time seated 25,000 people. Amazing. Of course, you can't come to Seville and not sample the incredible local cuisine. Some of the traditional dishes that you'll see on menus all over the city include spinach with chickpeas, pig's cheek, pork stew in a sandwich, pork loin with whiskey sauce, and orange wine. I hope you enjoyed exploring Seville with me. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. It really supports my channel. And I will see you next time as we explore even more of beautiful Spain.